Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're checking out the time Britain went to space. At the end of the Second World War, the two global superpowers of the world, the United States and the Soviet Union, you know I gotta do it. USA, USA, USA. Thank you, continue. The superpowers of the world, the United States and the Soviet Union, Scramble things to have changed. kidnap, bribe, rob, and naturalize hundreds of former Nazi rocket scientists and engineers. I'm sorry, what were those verbs again? Kidnap, bribe, rob, and naturalize. Kidnap, bribe, rob, and naturalize. They're Nazis. They deserve whatever they get. These researchers will be taken back to the homeland and forced to work on the space program of their new respective countries. <laughs> oh, God. Pine That's Werner von Braun's office. It's a nice office. Look at those rockets behind him. I like his shoes. I like his toys. All right. These researchers will be taken back to the homeland and forced to work on the space program of their new respective countries, pioneering space travel and eventually putting people into space, landing men on the moon, creating space stations, and laying the groundwork for basically all of modern space travel. But it wasn't just the reds wow. and the blues who stole German rocket technology. There was a third superpower in her twilight years with an interest yes. in taking the scientific spoils of war home in a last ditch attempt to expand her crumbling empire to the dawning frontier of space. Yo, who was bombed by the Nazis more than England? The Brits deserve the Nazi rocket technology, I would say. This is the time Great Britain went to space and then immediately gave <laughs> up. Okay. I just learned yesterday that Britain had a space program. For some reason, I just never even thought of it. And it's mostly used to launch satellites, which is actually very lucrative business, I, I hear. Why'd they give up? And then immediately gave up. Why? What? Aliens, probably. Those damn aliens. During the war, the Germans had invented some rather good medium-range missile technology called V-2 rockets, right, right, V2 which could be launched from northern Germany and land in London to kill people. <laughs> While the Allied air powers needed to send manned aircraft to bomb German cities, all the Germans needed to do was fire off a few rockets from the relative safety of a small base in Lower Saxony. This is a very powerful weapon, and after the war it was clear by the crumbling relationship between the East and the West that somebody had to liberate this technology for use in the upcoming Cold War. They didn't know the Cold War was coming up. Though, did they? No, they didn't. How could they know that? Wow, the Brits were having to fly planes over there to bomb, but the Germans could just launch rockets. That's a definite advantage. The reason I laughed when he said to kill people is because he said it so bluntly, not because I think killing people's funny. That somebody had to liberate this technology for use in the upcoming Cold War to get the upper hand. Most of these rocket bases were in the British sector of a divided Germany, but there was absolutely no way the Soviets or yeah. Americans... There was a British sector. Oh, wow, I didn't know that Germany was split up into, like, sectors for different countries. I thought it was just east and west, you know? Most of these rocket bases were in the British sector of a divided Germany, but there was absolutely no way the Soviets or Americans would allow one tiny island complete control of all the rocket science in the no world. Way. So by the time British occupation troops made it to these rocket bases, most of the documents relating to rocket technology had already been looted by the Americans. Sorry. The scientists, too, had already been bought out by the other powers, with top Damn. scientists like Werner von Braun opting to surrender to the United States because oh, he, he hated choice? the French, was scared of the Russians, and didn't think the British could afford him. Uh, it's a genuine quote, by the way, he actually said that. But wow. the British soon came to realize that even if they couldn't get the people who designed the rockets, the next best thing would be to kidnap those who operated the rockets. Kidnap? Ironically, those who fired the rockets at Britain were now wanted to be employed by Britain, hence <laughs> the name Operation Backfire. Prisoner of war camps were furiously searched for anyone who had any knowledge of how to operate a V-2 rocket. Meanwhile, 2,000 <laughs> Canadians... Wow, if I was one of those prisoners, I'd be like, I, 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 me, I can do it. Yeah, it's easy. Let me live. Meanwhile, 2,000 Canadian engineers had been employed to completely repair the missile silos. 2,000 Canadian scientists? 
I guess that's why it didn't work out. <laughs> and soon, enough German technicians have been found to fire three test rockets so that British scientists okay. could make notes and dissect how the machines worked. Clearly, okay. this is not the most efficient way to research rockets. They're like reverse Great engineering. Britain naturally didn't have the same amount of money that the USA or Soviets had, especially since the UK had a lot more important things on its mind than faffing around with space Rebuilding. toys. But what oh they did have an advantage in was some of the only information available on a chemical called high test peroxide, which mm. is a very explosive chemical formula, making it very useful for developing medium-range nuclear missiles. Yes. Oh wow, the way the clouds... that's crazy. As the Cold Ocean. War got colder, Britain looked for new ways in staying relevant on the world stage. One of these things was an independent wow, nuclear arsenal, that. and using the peroxide for That is crazy, y'all. Stage. Just One of these things was an independent nuclear arsenal, wow. and using the peroxide formula, they were able to develop a missile program. The resulting Blue Steel and Blue Streak missiles could travel at speeds of nearly 4,000 kilometers per hour and were capable of nuking wow. the Soviets before anyone could shoot them down. They were extremely reliable, having never failed a test mission, and could even go into space, despite the fact it was never designed to do that. The use of high test peroxide was decades ahead of its time, with the Americans and Soviets not realizing its potential well into the 1980s. What? It was at this point that the British scientists realized they'd gotten quite carried away. They'd developed such good missile technology, but it was really expensive and really impractical. The government was looking at simply buying American missiles to save on costs anyway. So what was the point of all this? Mm. Britain had just accidentally invented a rather powerful but rather useless rocket. It was time to <laughs> pivot useless. away from the military use and towards the scientific use. Okay, I guess they're saying it was useless because they're not thinking about nuking anyone anytime soon, but the rockets were really good. So let's let's give it to the science nerds and see what they can do with it. The scientists soon came to realize that these small and powerful rockets, if launched at the right time, at the right angle, with a few modifications, could theoretically get into orbit. And if they could put something into orbit, they could put a man or a crew or anything really, and finally compete with the Russians and the you Americans. You don't need to put a person up there. But of course, really. this would be costly. The Treasury did not like rockets. You don't need to put people in space. You know, just send a rocket with some sensors, a satellite or whatever. That's robot territory. All the life support system stuff is just not worth it. We got cameras, we got microphones. We got radars. Don't need eyes and ears. The Treasury did not like rockets. They were expensive, rarely worked, and had no real benefit rarely to the worked. people I the government were elected to serve. The government gave the space program the funds for five rockets and two satellites. There That's wasn't it? much, but the scientists were determined to make it work. The Australian no. ro Five rockets and two satellites were sending this much up into the sky by 11 a.m. every day. It's nothing. There wasn't much, but the scientists were determined to make it work. The Australian rural village of Woomera was selected as the launch site because the Australians still liked us at this point. Woomera is in the <laughs> middle of nowhere and close to the equator, making it That's easier good. to put things into orbit. And is that close the to the British equator? I thought it was way down there. Oh, okay. I mean, I guess there's the equator about, and that's about down there. So it's about that far. How far is Britain from the equator? Like, yeah, that's farther. Yeah, it's like a third farther. Okay, it is close to the equator, relatively. And close to the equator, making it easier to put things into orbit. And launching from the British Isles had the remote chance of the rocket crashing into an oil rig or France or something. The rockets right. would use that good old that high so test bad? peroxide. <laughs> so starting in June 1969, as the Americans were preparing to put men on the moon, the British were only just getting started. It would be called That's okay. the Black Arrow Program. Don't need to compare. Black Arrow Program. Whoa. Whoa, look at that rocket. Yo, a rocket should not do this. Or maybe it should. Maybe that's what we're doing wrong. 
Let's watch that rocket take off again, because it looks fake. It looks like a toy. Program. Watch this thing. Is that real? <laughs> it looks like a Thunderbirds episode. Oh, it exploded. Oh, wait. They're giving us stats on the left side. I'm not reading. I'm, I'm looking at that. Okay. Test launch. Electrical fault, electrical fault shortly after takeoff. Self-destructed. 1970. Rocket number two. That looks better. It's, it's going straight. One stage one and two before falling back to Earth. Okay. At least it didn't explode. Rocket number three. Full launch. Second stage oxidizer pressure. Crashed. Payload destroyed. Okay. With patchy results and very little to show for itself in July. So they've wasted three rockets at this point. Well, they didn't waste it. They learned stuff from it, I hope. Oh, they also wasted a satellite. I think the satellite was on that third rocket. With patchy results and very little to show for itself, in July 1971, the Ministry of Trade and Industry announced that the UK space program was to be cancelled with immediate effect, even what? though there were still two rockets and one satellite left to launch. Yeah. But the fourth rocket and final satellite were already en route to Australia. Surely, the scientists argued, it would be easier to let us launch the rockets rather than turning all those ships around to bring them back to the UK to yeah. be destroyed. <sighs> Fine, but one more. <laughs> one more rocket launch. That's all you get. What are you going to do with that and fifth so, rocket, though? And so, on the though? 28th of October, That's 1971, the engineers readied their final rocket for launch. The satellite okay. inside was named Prospero, after the Shakespeare character, who was a wizard who was forced to give up magic forever. It launched in the early afternoon, and everything went well to begin with. The launch went fine, the second <laughs> stage went fine, got into orbit, nice, nice, and then got the orbit. third stage, yes, and then there was a thunk as Prospero became stuck in the rocket. If it didn't free itself, it would stay inside the Black Arrow and crash into the atmosphere, and there was nothing the people on the ground could do. Communications went dead. Mm. Did it work? It worked? I think it worked. <laughs> Britain officially the best. <laughs> it had worked. Cheers. It had worked. Somehow, Prospero had made it into space and was broadcasting its sound back to Earth. A tiny piece of a dying empire, one last expansion, one last corner in which the sun must set. The reality is less dramatic. The launch didn't cause a U-turn, it didn't change the government's mind, and upon return to the home islands, most of the scientists were promptly out of a job. There was little fanfare or celebration. The public were too occupied with the more exciting Apollo missions by the United States. The very next day, all operations of the UK rocket program were shut down. That's a shame. The scientists were there. They did it. They made a success. They had one more rocket left. That's got to be frustrating. Those poor scientists, they were doing good. They had a success. Great work, you're fired. Command centers and construction hubs were turned into RAF bases, while the remaining rocket was shoved in an obscure corner of the London Science Museum. But let it be remembered that for a grand total of one day, the United Kingdom was a space-faring nation. Hey. It is part of an exclusive club of countries who know how to put things in orbit. Let's see, Soviet Union, France, Great Britain, is that India, Iran, USA, Japan, China, Israel, and who was that? I don't know. I don't know all these flags. But also part of an even more exclusive club of countries that have <laughs> given up the ability. Prospero is still in orbit. <gasps> it really? stopped broadcasting a signal in 2004, and any attempts to revive it have been futile. But it's still up there. The awesome. only evidence of a once mighty empire's attempt to reach the next frontier of it's mankind. It's covered in solar panels. 
I wonder why it ran out of power. Oh, cheers, Prospero. Still looking down on us, watching over us. So considerate of him to play America the Beautiful at the end of this. I know it's God Save the Queen, but I'm just trying to make you angry. What's up with Prospero now? Oh, the solar cell degraded. It had tape recorders on it. Little little analog tape on that thing. It stopped working in 1973. In September 2011, a team at University College of London's Muller Little London announced plans to reestablish communications. But it didn't work. Prospera can be seen through binoculars at magnitude plus six overhead, steady. I wish it was still going. Britain needs more satellites. At least they still have the one rocket left. Maybe they could make it happen with a 50-year-old rocket. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool. Sad that the government stopped the program just as they were having some success. Who knows what could have happened. It's too expensive. They had to pay all those people to clean up all that rubble. Rebuild the houses, I guess. Well, this is fascinating. I had no idea. Well, thank you all for watching this with me, and I'll see you next time. Later.